Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. My name is Hermann Ruckerbauer from I Know How and this is a short tutorial on DDR3 data input timings. On today's agenda we do have only two short topics. The interesting DDR3 input timing section and a boring short introduction of I Know How. I have put this one at the end so you can skip it easily. First I would like to make a short disclaimer. For simplicity, this tutorial tries to explain DDR2 and DDR3 input timings based on a data eye and an eye mask. This allows to do data evaluation on a simple eye diagram. But, as DRAMs are so asynchronous, this is not really correct. There would be two ways to do it better. The eye diagram could be generated based on the timing reference, for example the DQS, instead of the unit interval. But even this one is not solving the problem completely and the same can be achieved by adding the DQS uncertainty in the mask or in the timing budget calculation. The second and accurate option is to do the calculation on a cycle by cycle basis. Quite some effort would be required to implement this, but tool vendors have taken this effort already. For example, Ageland ADS does this in the DDR2 DDR3 design kit. The following input timing parameters out of the DRAM specification will be described. The ACDC based setup and hold times, TDS and TDH. The VREF based setup and hold times, if these are in the specification, this is for reference only. TVAC, after a valid transition over or below the AC level, the signals need to stay TVAC above or below the AC level. TDIPW, the minimum data input pulse width, and finally the resulting I mask based on these parameters. First, I would like to tell you some short background where the ACDC level definition is coming from. Different to point-to-point -point communication systems, the point-to-multipoint -point memory systems are reflection dominated. While in a point-to-point -point system a diamond-shaped eye mask fits quite well in a normal eye, this mask can cost quite some margins if reflections are seen on the bus. The first approach to optimize the spec definition for DDR2 was to define the energy that is required to switch the receiver. This would be equivalent to the area below the waveform. But this turned out to be too complicated for practical usage. Therefore, the ACDC level concept, including the derating, was adapted to ensure that the receiver will switch fast enough to get reasonable small setup times, while not switching back if, if a reflection hits the receiver later on. This is similar to the physical behavior of a normal DRAM receiver. The eye that you see on the lower right of the slide is a typical result of a two-slot memory system simulation. One can clearly see the reflections, limiting the rising and falling edges. We will see this eye later on in a comparison of a diamond-shaped eye mask versus the ACDC-based mask. Now let's start with a table out of a DRAM spec. There are two columns. For the higher speed grades, the system can only provide a reduced swing, so the AC level was reduced from 175 millivolt to 150 millivolt. This should account for newer process technologies, but was also done on cost of some timing parameters. The first parameter that we do have here is TDS, T data setup. The spec that was used listed values for AC and VREF. The VREF values are for reference only. From the signal crossing with the AC level to the timing reference, the DQS crossing, the DRAM requires a setup time of at least 75 picoseconds at a slew rate of 1 volt per nanosecond. Due to this slew rate, the recalculation from AC to VREF is quite simple. To cross 175 millivolt, the signal requires 175 picoseconds. Therefore, the signal VREF crossing needs to be 250 picoseconds before the DQS crossing to give the DRAM receiver enough setup time to switch correctly. The same we do have for TDH, T data hold. The difference is that this one is related to the DC level only. The next parameter is TDIPW, T 
data input pulse width. This is defined only at VREF. And the last one to cover today is TVAC. This is the time the signal needs to stay above the AC voltage and is therefore related to the AC level. Now let's transfer these numbers into a diagram for an eye as seen in the lower right. This shows voltage over the bit time, the unit interval UI for DDR3800. The UI start and end are defined by the red vertical lines. The DQS crossing is the timing reference. Based on VREFs is 750 millivolt, the VAC high for AC175 calculates to 925 millivolts and similar the VAC low to 575 millivolt. Now we are going to add the DC levels. When the receiver switched after a signal transition, the signal can fall below the AC levels as long as it stays above the DC levels. For simplicity, we exchange the DQS and DQS complement signals by the differential DQS. This one has a slew rate of 2V per nanoseconds. The signal in the diagram is shifted up by 750mV to have a timing reference at the VREF crossing. Out of these numbers we can generate already a simple eye mask. Starting at the DQS crossing, we go 75 picoseconds to the left. And the same for hold. Starting from the DQS crossing, go 150 picoseconds to the right. Now connect the crossing points of the setup with AC with the crossing points of the hold lines with the DC levels. This mask is often used as it is quite simple, but there are still missing some features. We can try to add TVAC as well. To fulfill the spec, the signal needs to stay above the AC level after the last AC crossing. So let's draw a 38 picosecond TVAC line starting at the minimum setup time. After this time, the signal can go down to the DC level. Overall, this results in the red mask shape. This mask can be compared to a VREF based diamond shaped mask. At 1V per nanosecond, this is quite simple. Starting from data setup and data hold, a line is drawn with a slew rate of 1 volt per nanosecond. This generates a diamond shape eye mask. This one crosses the AC level at T data setup and the DC level at T data hold. We can compare these two masks with the eye that we have seen before. The AC DC based eye mask is not violated but the VREF based mask is crossed due to the reflections. And now we will see why it was not really correct what we have done. We are applying the same concept to DDR3 1600 with 150 millivolt AC levels. With 163 picoseconds TVAC being much larger compared to T data hold of 45 picoseconds, the red mask that is generated by adding TVAC is not really useful. Basically, TVAC needs to be checked on a cycle by cycle basis. If you don't have a tool that has the cycle by cycle check implemented, you can still do a simplified check in an eye diagram. You need to start the TVAC line not at the minimum setup time, but at the last valid signal crossing with the AC level. 
Now the eye should not cross the TVAC line anymore. If TVAC is violated, the use starting point for TVAC and the crossing line of the eye could still come from a different cycle. So if this test fails, it is still possible to pass the cycle by cycle test. But if your eye passes this test, also the cycle by cycle test will pass. Similar to TVAC, also the data input pulse width cannot be checked correctly in a data eye, but needs a cycle by cycle check. Again, a simplified check is possible. Take the VREF crossing and put the data input pulse width line there. If this test passes, a cycle by cycle test will pass as well. If this test fails, a cycle by cycle test can still be passed. The TDIPW is the reason why data setup and data hold cannot be critical in the same cycle. Checking setup and hold time in the eye diagram is possible, but not as easy as one might think. Due to the eye generation, setup and hold violations can be seen in one picture, even they come from different cycles. But the DQS uncertainty is still missing. There are several ways to solve this. Add the DQS uncertainty in the eye mask or in a separate timing budget calculation. This is again worst case, as it does not consider cycle accurate timings. The second option is to generate the eye referenced to the DQS crossing instead of just overlaying unit intervals, or to do really a cycle by cycle calculation. Now let's come to the conclusion. The really correct way to check if a system violates the input timings of the DRAMs is a cycle by cycle calculation. Simpler might be a worst case check by an eye diagram. If the eye based tests of T data setup and T data hold with worst case DQS uncertainty, the TVAC and the TDIPW are passing, there might be still some more margin in the cycle accurate timing check. Now we are at the end of the DDR3 data input timing section. Any feedback, best by email, is welcome. If you find this tutorial useful, feel free to donate some money via PayPal. If the feedback and the donations show enough interest, a similar tutorial will be generated for other topics. Possible topics are recalculation from ACDC to VREF based timings, input timing setup and hold derating, timing budget calculation or any other topic that you propose. And now, as threatened in the beginning, the boring part with some information on I know how. The founder of I know how, Hermann Ruckerbauer, is just talking. I know how was founded in March 2009 in Moos, a small village in Bavaria, Germany. We do have network partners in Munich, Straubing, Deckendorf and China. Hermann Ruckerbauer studied microsystem technology at the University of Applied Sciences in Regensburg. He got quite a lot of experience in memory development and high-speed signaling during his career at Siemens, Infineon and Kimondo. Out of this time he holds many patents and did quite some publications. I know how provides the following services and can support you with your designs. Consulting for high-speed signaling. Consulting for memory implementation. High-speed simulation and measurement. Power delivery simulations. Model generation. Logic analyzer measurements. Failure analysis, especially on memory interfaces. PCB design and layout. Thank for your attention and goodbye.